Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and what we're going to cover today is how to use the Intersection Observer API to create an infinite scroll list. Uh, so the app we're looking at right now, it's got this beautifully styled uh, green button that says Load More. As you click it, it loads 10 records. I scroll to the bottom, I click it again, it loads 11 to 20, and then it finishes up here at 25. Now, I'm having to click this every time, the infinite scroll is basically as you reach the bottom of the list, it detects that and it automatically makes a fetch call to load the next set of data. So that's what we're going to cover today. So as we go over to our React app, what we've got are a few pieces of state provided by our context. If you want to know how we got up to this point, um, it's not entirely needed for this video, but I have a video on how to use the use reducer hook and the use context hook. So those are two videos you might want to check out. But essentially, I've got some code that loads the data up here. We don't really need to know about that. All we need to know about is what state do we have available. So we have our data. That's the array of elements that we loop or we map to create list items for. We've got this loading Boolean state that we can use to decide whether we show a loading spinner or whether we show the, the load more or not. We've got a Boolean called more, which tells us, is there any more data to actually load? And then we have a function to call when we want it to actually go and load the data. So this is the key piece right here. Right now, when is this being triggered? It's being triggered when I click on the button in the on click. So we're going to replace this. And what we'll actually do is we'll watch for when this element appears on the screen using the intersection observer API, and we'll get it to automatically load the next set of data. So to get started with that, we are going to create a variable called the observer. And what this will be, we'll actually be using the use ref hook. And I'll explain a little bit about why. So when you use, use ref, it basically gives you an object that has a current attribute that points to the current thing you're referencing. And when you create it, you can pass in what the initial value will be. So here's where we'll initialize our intersection observer. So we'll say new intersection observer. And there's a couple things you can pass to this. The first is a callback function that will be called every time the elements that you're observing are um, shown on the screen. And the next argument you can pass are some options. So what options are available? If we just go look on the um, Mozilla guide, we can pass in the root sort of by default, if you pass nothing, it's when is the element visible within the viewport, but you can limit it to smaller divs. It doesn't really matter. You can set different margins. So you could have it appear before you, um, maybe 50 pixels before an element scrolls into the viewport. So you can preemptively load before they even get to the bottom. Um, but the one we'll be playing around with a little bit is the threshold. How much of this element needs to appear on the screen before we trigger this observation event. So if we come back here to the code, we're going to pass in, um, what is it, threshold. And we'll say it's a threshold of one, meaning it needs to be fully visible on the screen before the observation uh, callback is triggered. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is we need to create a reference to this element because in order to tell the observer which element to observe, we need sort of a reference to the actual DOM element. So to do that, we are going to um, use some state, but we'll call this state the element and the set element. And it will be equal to react.useState. So at the beginning, it's going to be null. And we need to use the ref prop. So ref prop, you're probably used to passing in something that was created using use ref, but you can actually pass a function in here that will be called sort of when this element is rendered and that function will receive the element itself. So if we actually just pass in set element here, when it's rendered, the set element function will be called and this element will be put into our state. So now we have it available in this element variable like this. 
Okay, so why would we do that? The reason is we want to basically detect when this element changes so we can tell the observer to go and observe that element. So anytime we're detecting when some state changes, that's when we want to use the use effect hook. So we'll spin up that right here, use effect. So we pass the function to be called, which is the effect, and which variables to watch for changes to. So we'll be watching for changes to the element. Okay. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to create a copy of it and um, put that into a variable called current element L equals element. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. And it's because we're going to use the cleanup function. So we sort of want a reference to that inside of this function here so that it creates a closure and it's available to the cleanup effect function that we'll be returning. We're also going to have a variable that points to the current observer. So because the observer is a reference to this intersection observer. Um, we want current observer, and that is equal to observer.current. So every time you have an actual ref created by the useRef hook, it's an object that has a current property, so we can use that to get the current observer. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to check if current element actually has a value. Because the first time it renders it will be, have its initial value of null. So we don't want to tell the observer to observe null. That doesn't really make sense and it will give us an error anyways. So we're checking to see that the current element actually references an element and it's not null like it is when it is first rendered. So if there's an element, we are going to say to our current observer to observe the current element like this. So Hooks always have two functions that are called. The first one is when the hook sort of is triggered for the first time. And the next is a cleanup function that's called when uh, what, whatever you're observing changes and you need to clean up from the previous value. So what we can do here is we can still check was current element there? If it was, let's tell our observer to unobserve or to stop watching that element because it's not um, valid anymore, it's not visible on the screen. Okay, so nothing's really happening so far. We are observing the element, which is this list item to see when it appears, but we haven't yet done anything with our intersection observer callback. So let's deal with this function here now. So this function receives a variable which is typically called entries. So because you can watch 10 things at a time or 100 things, it doesn't really matter. It gives you an array of all of the entries that were just triggered the observation callback. And because we're only really watching one at a time, let's just grab the first entry and put it into a variable like this. And let's console.log so we can see what it looks like. So when the page loads, because our sort of reload um, trigger is visible right now, we get this intersection observer entry, which is what I'm console.logging here in our intersection observer callback function. So what we can see are a few things. It gives us lots of information about how much of it is visible, where is it visible on the screen. And uh, the most important thing we're looking for is this boolean here is intersecting because this callback is called both when it appears so when intersecting is true but also when it disappears so when intersecting is false and we only really want to load data when is intersecting is true so we can wrap this in a in an if statement if first is intersecting so that's when we want to call the load function to load our data so as soon as I save this, we should see that it's starting to work. So it's intersecting, which triggers the loading, which loads our data. And one thing that caused me probably an hour or two of grief is we get to the bottom. We can see that it's starting to appear, but because I did a threshold of one, meaning 100% of it has to be on the screen, it doesn't trigger a load until it's fully visible. But what you'll see is that 
It didn't load number 11, it started again at 0. We come down to the bottom, and it loads 1 again. And it keeps sort of cycling over and over itself. So why is this the case? The case is because we've taken this load function from our context, and we used it um, inside of this callback function here that was only ever run once during the initialization. Initialize. Well, I don't know what that word is. Initialize. Initi initiation of the ref. Anyways, doesn't matter. So when we initialized this ref, we created a new copy of it, and this entry's callback, it acted as a closure, and it basically took a snapshot of the load function as it was the first time this was ever rendered. So if we go up and look at this load function, it's also acting as a closure around the after variable. So it basically captured the after variable when it was at zero. And now every time this callback is triggered, it's always going to have the after value of zero. So that's why as you scroll, it's reloading from the beginning every time. So it took me a while to figure out a way around this, and we can actually do that using another ref. So what we can do is create a variable called a loader, and it will be a ref. And that ref will start off having our load function in it, which is the initialization of it. And then what we can do is watch for whenever this load function changes, meaning we have a new version of it, we want to change the current value of this loader ref. So again, we're going to use use effect because we're watching for changes. So when the load function changes, what do we want to do? We want to take our current loader and set it equal to this new load function. So we're not out of the clear yet, or in the clear yet. We need to come back here and instead of calling load directly, we need to call loader.current so that we're not... Um, because this is an object, it doesn't matter that this was sort of an enclosure. The object is being mutated, so when we call current, it's always going to get the current value, which is the most recent load function. Because we watch for changes to this load function in the use effect, and we updated its value here. So now as we load the screen, it loads our first 10. We come down, and now it loads 11. We come to the bottom and now it loads 25. So just a little bit of cleanup, I guess, because it doesn't even really make sense anymore to have a button in here. We can just have an empty LI, and we probably don't want it to have a background. Uh, let's just say it's transparent, because that doesn't really make sense to have a big green, um, like, bottom LI. So we load it. It says loading because it was intersected. We get to the bottom. It's loading again, loading again, and we get to the end. So what we ended up with is an infinite scrolling, sort of auto-loading the next data. And we did that by observing when the last sort of fake loading element is fully visible on the screen using Intersection Observer. So just to cover what we went over, coming back up here, we first created, using the use ref hook, um, a reference to an instance of an intersection observer. This received our callback function, which is called every time the elements that we observe are visible on a screen or they disappear from the screen with a threshold of 100%, meaning they're fully visible on the screen. We created um, some state that points to the element that we want to use as sort of the thing we're detecting if it's visible or not. So we used the set element function passing it to the ref, so this is called receiving a reference to the actual li dom element, and that puts it in our state under element. And then we used an effect to watch for whenever this element changes, so we can tell the observer to either observe the element, or when this element is no longer sort of valid, to start to unobserve, to stop watching that element. The last thing we did is we ran into some issues of this callback function acting as an enclosure, or a closure, sorry. 
and it was referencing an old version of the load function that was always loading the very first data over and over again. So by using a ref and this loader function, or this loader object instead, we could detect whenever the load function changes and update the current property of the loader ref, and we can call loader.current instead of calling the load function directly. So that ensures that we always get the fresh version of the load function. So that is how you can use Intersection Observer to create an infinite scrolling list. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.